Let's play a shell game. I have light and dark shells, and I'll start by randomly laying some out in a line. The game is this. Given a line, make a new line. The rule is, wherever there are three in a row of the same color, put a white shell under the middle one of the three. Otherwise, put a black shell under each shell. This gives us a new row, and we can apply the same rule to it. Where there are three in a row of the same color, the following row has white. The question is, what do you think will happen if we keep doing this for many rows? Why not stop now and try it? Keep that question in mind, but what I really want to talk about is color patterns on shells. This Nautilus shell, famous for illustrating an exponential spiral, has stripes. It's easy to understand certain striped shells. The animal that creates this shell is always growing. It has a part called the mantle along the rim, which slowly secretes calcium carbonate to make the shell. The mantle can also secrete pigments that color the shell. Shells that have stripes parallel to the rim result from the pigment density varying with time. What that oscillation period might result from, the phase of the moon or an internal chemical clock, I don't know. I'm not a shell expert. But mechanisms of exponential growth in a spiral and pigment density oscillating over time are clearly sufficient to make these stripes. And shells with stripes going this way are also easy to understand. Pigment production clearly varies along the length of the mantle. You can see the color changes. So these lines are a trail left behind in the shell as the animal grew. So given these two types of stripes, combinations of them seem pretty natural. Pigment varies along the length of the mantle and oscillates in time. But now these patterns fascinate me. What is this creature doing? Look at all these triangles of different random sizes with the tips pointing in the direction of growth. And here's a different species with a similar pattern. What could make such complex designs? Surprisingly, these intricate patterns can be generated by a simple underlying rule. In fact, you already know the rule. What do you think happens when we continue this game? It's easier for me to do this in software. Start with a random line of bits and put a white bit under the middle in every group of three in a row and black elsewhere. These downward pointing triangles keep occurring in all different sizes and positions. It's a very natural model for what happens in the shell. It's a simple one-dimensional deterministic cellular automaton. You may be familiar with Conway's Game of Life, which is a two-dimensional cellular automaton. Each cell is in one of two states, and there's a simple rule that says how the next state depends only on adjacent cells. And some people study generalizations to three dimensions, to automata with more than two allowable states, or to rules that look further than just the nearest neighbor. But it's surprising that a deterministic one-dimensional automaton with only two states for each cell and looking only at the nearest neighbor left and right can generate such enormously complex and random looking results. How many rules are possible? If the new state of the cell depends only on the current state of that cell and its immediate neighbors, then the rule has to say what appears in the next time step for each neighborhood consisting of three bits. There are eight possible three-bit patterns, shown in red, so the rule is specified by the blue column of eight bits. Here it's 0111110. We can change this column and explore what happens. We have eight binary choices, so there are two to the eighth, or 256 possible automata in this family. They're naturally numbered 0 to 255 by reading the blue column as a binary number. This one is then rule 126. If we change the blue column, we have a different rule with a different result. Some rules lead to a very simple behavior where the initial patterns quickly die out to a constant. And some rules lead to simple cyclic alternation. Stephen Wolfram has systematically studied the possible rules in many classes of, of cellular automata to see what kinds of behavior results. His book, A New Kind of Science, contains a huge compendium of examples. He found some, such as this Rule 30, which lead to great complexity. Here, by starting Rule 30 with just one bit set, you can see the complexity of this output is not due to randomness in the initial state. It arises from the application of the simple rule itself. Another, Rule 110, has been proven to be Turing complete. It's a universal computer in the sense that you can set up the starting row analogous to specifying a computer program. The sequence of new rows that follow is a computation leading to an answer that's equivalent to anything you can compute on any other type of computer. 
I like this discovery so much that I commissioned this Rule 110 teapot cozy. Camilla Fox uses a two-strand knitting technique where she can bring either of the two colors out to the surface and decides which color to show for each stitch by looking at the three stitches in the previous row and applying Rule 110 in her head. It's a universal computation in stitches. I also have a beautiful roll of cellular automata output punched into packing paper. The intricacy of Rule 30 inspired the artist Christopher Meiska to make a kinetic sculpture which stamps the pattern continuously on paper. This remarkable machine, literally an automaton, senses the state with three probes, then punches or not with hardware logic that embodies Rule 30. It works at a snail's pace, but all this grows from just one hole he makes in the first row. You can see Rule 30 if you look closely. Below every OOO is an O. Below every 001 is a 1, etc. Snails have no brains, I'm told, but it only takes a simple mechanism for the surprising richness of this shell pattern to emerge. The automaton is an initial model for an open problem that needs further investigation at the frontier of our biological modeling knowledge. I wonder what other patterns and structures around us might be seen in a new way if we think in terms of computation.